Come on, somebody shout it out. This evening I greet you in the name that is above every other name. Happy Good Friday. Amen. 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 Happy Good Friday. Welcome you to Everlasting Life Christian Center. Amen. Amen. If you are here for the first time, can you please stand? We want to acknowledge you, meet you, tell us your name, the brother. My name is Mark Black. I come from a church home right now. It's uh, New Antioch Baptist Church in Ramstown. Yeah. Uh, Bishop Pastor Barney. Yeah. Uh, pastor Barney is a, my pastor. And uh, it's been in a while, but I was invited by a good friend of mine. I've been working with him for about four years at Amazon. And oh, he's been yeah. working on me for four years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he said, he said, uh, he said I, you know, I told him, I said, I'll be going trying to get in service all Friday, but situations happen, and this is the only service I can make. Praise Amen. God, and I get to see my talk to hear my man speak seven last words. Seven last words. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome you to Everlasting Life to the Center. Let me see that. Anybody here for the first time? Also, we have Jason Dad and Mom yeah. here with us today. We yeah. will to greet you, sir, man, in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Hello, um, I'm Chastity, and I was invited by Miss Felicia. We met last night in the grocery store. Oh. 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 Yes, yes. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Amen. Also, I greet all the ministers that are here in the name that is above every other name. Well, today, Minister Jason will read the seven last words of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
third saying, John 19, 26 through 27. And say, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Amen. You know, even though they weren't blood related, but the same Holy Spirit is that spirit is different than blood. Yeah. So even though they weren't uh, genetically related, but they were spiritually bonded to Christ yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And now the fourth thing Matthew 27, verse 46, and it's also in Mark 15, verse 34. About the and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Ira, Ira, Thomas, Apatana. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when I thought of that, that read that and I looked up to kind of really deeply as to that moment of when he cried those words unto God. So you can only imagine like a mother and a son, or a son and daughter, that when they are separated from their mother, or separated from their father, how that relationship is now divided. You don't have this the source of the being that is taking care of you, that is searching you, that is watching over you, but you, you don't have that access to that source anymore. So Jesus being the light of the world, this father is the light of the world, the light unto a pathway, the lamp unto a feet. It was a divine cause that now he, having taken upon the sins of all of mankind, the light of darkness cannot coexist. So upon came the sins that we had that he had committed upon his shoulders, now separated from the father, crying out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken? So he no longer had God for that brief moment. So the love, the peace was no longer there. This he was not separated from the Father. So when we don't have that in our lives, when we feel alone, when we feel abandoned, by God, God never leaves us, no forsake, but he doesn't uh, condone sin. He doesn't admonish sin. He doesn't tolerate sin. He separates himself. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The fifth word, John 19, verse 28. It says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, "I thirst." So there's no deeper meaning to that than that it was said, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. He said, "I thirst." Amen. The sixth word, John 19, verse 8, says, So when Jesus had received 
the sour wine. He said, it is finished. No, no, no. And it wasn't a, a cry of defeat, a cry of sorrow, a cry of weariness, but it is finished. That is, he had accomplished all that he came to accomplish. He had fulfilled all that he came to fulfill. He had achieved all for which he had purposed to achieve while on the face of the earth. He had set the example, set the standard, and raised the bar as for how we are to follow after him and follow and walk in his uh, in his righteousness after the sins of God, sharing the gospel, respond to the highways and to the byways, being um, persecuted for the sake of the gospel. And he said, it is finished. Knowing that he had accomplished everything he came to fulfill while on the face of the earth. So it was a cry of victory. He had overcome death. He had defeated the enemy. That it was as if the enemy, as it has always been said, if the enemy had known what he was doing, he would not have done. Amen. The last, the last week, the seventh day, Luke 23. Verse 46. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Which is emphasizing yet again that his life was not taken. He gave it up for our sake. That is, he saw the value in each and every one of us. He said that it was worth dying for us. He didn't have, they even tried to discourage him. Say, why God, you know, save yourself if you are the Messiah. Deliver the, the people. But he did not have anything to prove. He had nothing to show but to fulfill that what his father had sent him to fulfill. And he laid down his life willingly. Say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Amen. 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 Into your hands. I commend my spirit. That was the seventh word. The sixth was, it is finished. That means he paid the price for everything that we will ever need. He came for that purpose and he did it. The Bible makes us understand that he screamed, he shouted, loud voice. Actually, it was twice. He shouted. The first one was Ela, Ela, Lama Sabatani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He said that because at that moment, Jesus was carrying all our sins. And he realized the consequences of sin, his separation. At that moment, he was separating from his father. Why have you forsaken me? There had to be separation. Separation is painful. He has been with his father forever in eternity past. Now on the cross, he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Actually, it was the word of David that David actually prophesied. I believe that was Psalm 22. David, David prophesied the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus recited it again on the cross. That's to say, to let you know the word of God is one. God, when you when speak something, it will come to pass. To me, the way I look at it, the cross was just a fulfillment of what Christ was called to do. Actually, Jesus was fulfilling the scripture. He was fulfilling everything. Thank you very much, Minister Jason. Can we bless God for Minister Jason?
One more time. Glory to God. Let's bless God for me suggestion. We're going to partake of the communion uh, just this Friday and only Sunday. We're going to be doing it for now uh, because today's Good Friday. We got to look backward. Uh, there are five reasons why we partake of the Lord's Supper. Number one, we look backward. We look backward to do what? To remember what Jesus did on the cross. That's one of the reasons that we partake, to remember. The Bible says, as often as you do this, you do it. In what? In remembrance of me. The Bible didn't give us a set time that we have to do it once a month or once a year. But that's often. Sometime at my home, I partake of myself. I just remember what Jesus did for me on the cross. If not of Jesus, I will not be here today. You will not be here today. And even if you are here, that means you are separated from God. Remember, Jesus came to do what? To move the enmity between God and man. That was what? Active reconciliation. You remember? To move it. So the first thing we do, we look backward. And remember what Jesus did 22,000 years ago. He went on the cross. Jesus going on the cross was not accidental. Jesus going on the cross was purposeful. He went there because he came for that. Because the Bible said the wages of sin is death. Amen. So he has to come. He has to pay the price. We're supposed to die. We were separated from God. But Jesus came to die so that there will be reconciliation between us and God. I'm so excited that Jesus came. I'm so blessed that Jesus came. I'm so blessed that Jesus paid my price. There was a ransom that needed to be paid. Remember the four scriptural meaning. Four scriptural meaning or definition of Christ's death. Number one, ransom. A ransom. It came to pay the price that was set for our redemption. Number two, propitiation. His blood was what? Propitiation of our sin. What does that mean? When God sees Jesus' blood, he overlooks our sin. Hallelujah. When you see as long you are in Christ Jesus, he overlooks. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Number three was reconciliation. Without propitiation, there's no reconciliation. And number four, substitute. Jesus was our substitute. He received the reward of our disobedience and we receive the reward of his obedience. Now we can say we are righteous. Righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because of the price that he has paid for all of us. Amen. Come on, say I am righteous. For what Christ has done on the cross. The blood of Jesus is my property. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, what you've done for me today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we stand? Minister, can you pass out the communion? So, number one reason we part the communion is to look backward and remember what Jesus did today. Number two, we look upward. Why are they passing it? We look upward to do what? To give thanks to God for sending Jesus. We look upward. Number two, three. We look what? Inward. We look inward and amend our ways with God. Number four, we look around and forgive everybody. Remember what Jesus said, number one, that means that Jesus just read. He said, Father, forgive them. Did you hear that? Number one was what? Father, forgive them. For they do not know 
what they are doing. Amen. So number four is we look around and forgive everyone. Today I want you to release everyone from your heart. Everyone that have offended you. Everyone that have hurt you. Can you say the same thing like, Father, forgive them. Forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Release them from your heart. And number five, we look forward to his coming. We look forward to his coming. Let's take the bread. Looking backward to remember what Jesus did on the cross. Why, if it's not for Jesus, where will we we'll be? Do you remember what he did? Me, I remember. Every day I remember, I look back to the cross. Remember, passive reconciliation is what? Looking at the cross that causes changes in man. Passive reconciliation. Active reconciliation is the removal of the enmity that brought barrier between God and man. The war between us and man. So we can reconcile with God and worship God with spirit to spirit. Let's lift up the, the bread. The bread symbolizes the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was broken. His, blood, his body was broken for us. It was broken for our healing, for our deliverance. I truly believe he said, by his stripes, we were what? Healed. You know what that means? Because every time they put 39 stripes on his back, the moment they put the stripe, there was a cut and the blood shed. Jesus paid the price for our healing. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? If you believe that today, I truly believe God will touch you and God will heal you. I don't need to lay hands on you. I don't need to pray for you. But because what Christ has done on the cross, his body was broken for our healing, for our deliverance. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. I declare in the name of Jesus as you partake. Hallelujah. This bread that symbolizes the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, sicknesses in your body must disappear in the name of Jesus because Jesus paid the price. I said Jesus paid the price. If you believe, you are healed. I said if you believe, you are healed. Can we lift it up? That's what it means. His body was broken. He was broken. He's talking about the 39 stripes that were put on his for our healing. High blood pressure, you are healed. If you have that. Diabetes, you are healed. Cancer, you are healed. Any form of diseases, you are healed. Because Jesus paid the price. I believe and I am healed. I believe and I am delivered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. He was broken for us. Jesus never seen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your body. Let's give thanks. For your body that was broken. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus name. You may break it. Symbolize broken body. Then you may partake. Then let's take the cup. The cup symbolizes the blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed. I'm going to share a little bit with you. To understand the power of the blood. To understand the power of atonement. To understand the kind of blood that will shed for you. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. The cup symbolized the blood of Jesus that was shed. The Bible said the lamb of the blood, is in the life of the flesh, is in the what? It's in the blood. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your body, the blood that was shed. We thank you that you are given to us on the altar to cleanse us, to purify us. You give us life that we might be saved. I thank you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Well, before we go there, before I do that, is anybody here want to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? We cannot partake until you give your life to Jesus. I know most people here are. If you don't have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, before I do this, can you come forward and be pray for you? Anyone? 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 We can all partake. Amen. Glory to God. Everyone is saved, sanctified. All right. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blood that was shed. 
We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Saints, let us pray. And the Bible says, as often our minister will come around to get cup. Say, as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of him. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm going to share with you for a few minutes. Amen. Also, remember Sunday, we're going to be here Sunday morning. Resurrection. Hallelujah. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord? I know our all of gladness, praise and worship, have a powerful praise and worship service for us. I am ready. Because Jesus is alive. And is alive forever. The dead could not hold him. And he lived forever. Hallelujah. He is the resurrection and the life. So please be here Sunday morning as well. And then after the service, we're going to go to the address. we we'll put that on the screen where we're going to have resurrection celebration dinner. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have a feast and fellowship. Amen? I'm going to be brief with you just to so give me a few minutes. Amen. A few minutes. Let's go to John 19, John 19, 31 to 37. I'm just going to give some account on the cross, the account from John. Also the account, a short account from Luke. I always like to use John for crucifixion and resurrection. And I will tell you why. Why I like to use the book of John? Because the Bible makes us understand that John was an eyewitness. Maybe the other disciples were there, I didn't know. But based on the scripture, remember the, I believe, was it the fourth or the fifth saying? Jesus told John, actually it was John who was talking about. He says, son, behold your mother. Mother, behold your You know who he was talking to? Talking about his mother and John. John and mother. Because John was there. The Bible makes us understand he was an eyewitness for crucifixion. He was there. I don't know if Peter was there. I believe Peter was gone. We know the incident that happened and Jesus prophesied that, that you're going to betray me three times. You, you, you know? I, I don't, don't get me wrong. I, I truly believe Peter was a bold man. I truly believe in the bold man. I think Peter could have said, yes, I know him. But it was no time for him. Because if they had said he knew Jesus, they would crucify him as well. But when you read the scripture, he was crucified anyway. You understand? Remember I told them, don't crucify me the way you crucified the Lord. Turn me upside, upside down. I truly believe it was done his time. Fear came upon him. I say, I don't know that guy. That Jesus, I don't know him. Three times. I believe John Peter was gone. But John was there. And I'm t- I will tell you why. Anytime you read the scripture, the Bible says the, scri- the, 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 the disciple that Jesus loved. Don't get me wrong, he loved all of them. Can we say amen? But John and Peter were very close. They were closer than the other disciple. Then Jesus, you know, you have what we call the inner circle as well. There were three inner circles. Number one, Peter. Number two, John. Number three, James. There's some places Jesus will go, he will only take the three. And I truly believe there's some places Jesus will go, he will only take one. So I like to use the book of John because John was an eyewitness. Jesus told us he was there. Also, for resurrection, John was an eyewitness. Maybe I will share that on Sunday, you will see that. Remember when they told them, Mary told them that Jesus' body had been stolen? What, what happened? He and Peter ran. But see, connection. 
in relationship. I always watch connection who is well connected and when you are connected to somebody, that means that person is in your heart and you hear in their heart. When they told them who outrun the other, John did what? Outrun Peter. When he heard that, say Jesus, because they're so connected, he outran him. But John did not get go into the tomb. You remember? We will share that on Sunday. You didn't remember. You don't remember. You didn't remember, church. You didn't remember. Peter outrun when he heard it. He jumped. He got to the tomb first. But he got scared. But Peter came. Peter, Peter was bold. Peter came there. Peter entered first. And with the, then John, when they find out nothing happened to Peter. <laughs> then John then entered. Maybe I will share that for you a little bit on Sunday. The miraculous resurrection. Ah, oh, the glorious body disappeared from the living cross. Oh my God. Well, let's share this quick. John, let's go to John 19. I'll be brief, I promise you. <laughs> Amen. Somebody. John 19, 31. He said, therefore, because it was the preparation day that the body shall not remain on the cross until Sabbath. For that Sabbath was a high Sabbath. Remember, I discussed this last week. That was a preparation day. It was a high Sabbath. Crucifixion on a Friday. Sabbath starts on when? Friday. So they have to rush them off the what? Of the cross. Because you don't crucify on a Sabbath. What it will do, it will defy the land. There will be cause on the land. So they have to rush them. So the Jew asked the pilot that their legs might be broken. And that they might be taken away. We talked about this when Sunday. What must be broken? Why leg? Because crucifixion is by suffocation. Remember? Crucifixion, because the thief, what they do? They lengthen their death. They want to stay longer, live longer. So they use their what? Ankle to carry the what? The weight. To carry the weight. So they want to rush them out and they told them to go and do what? Break their leg so that they cannot carry the what? The weight. Amen. Neck is not constructed to what? To carry what? Weight. But our legs can what? Carry weight. So they went and do what? They tend to go and cut their leg. Then the soldier came and broke the legs of the first and the other who was Crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, hallelujah, and saw that he was already dead. Jesus was already dead. That means something. And it being they broke his leg, that means they killed him. They did not kill him. They killed the two other thieves. But they did not kill Jesus. They cannot kill Jesus. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. You cannot kill life. And all of this proves that the death of Christ was not accidental, was purposeful. Was not accidental. Jesus came for this. They cannot kill him. He is the resurrection and the life. That's why they could not they didn't break his leg. It was already gone. It was not necessary for them to uh, to break his leg. They cannot kill him. This tell us this was not accidental. This also tell us that Jesus came and laid down his life. Hallelujah. And he has the power to pick it back up. If they kill him, he will not resurrect him. No, he will not. He never sinned. Amen. He never sinned. Because if he sinned, it wouldn't be a perfect sacrifice. God needed what? A perfect sacrifice. One man sinned or sin. Sin came from Adam. 
Glory to God. Righteousness came from what? From Jesus. Because Jesus never sinned. God needs a perfect sacrifice. He need pure blood. Hallelujah. Really, the blood that was shed, it was the blood of God, not the blood of man. Hallelujah. So when the soldier, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But, but one of the soldiers pierced, pierced his side with a spear. And immediately blood and water came out. Blood and water came out. That also means something. Everything that happened on the cross was purposeful. They didn't realize what they were doing. Blood and what? Blood. That's an inner healing. Jesus paid the price for our inner healing. And he who has seen has testified. Please underline that. He who has what? Uh-huh. Has testified. He who has seen. That's why I always you, John. He saw it. He was an eyewitness. And his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth. So that we may, so that we may believe. For this thing was done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, Another scripture said, they shall look on him whom they pierced. They pierced. Let's also go to Luke 23, 46. And when he has cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his Life is last. The bread is last. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about the power of atonement. The power of atonement. Nothing is as powerful as a covenant made with blood. The most powerful covenant is covenant that is made with blood. And the power of that covenant depends on what kind of blood was shed. I, I, I'm going to repeat this, church. Can I? Nothing is as powerful as a covenant made with blood. And the power of any covenant is in the power of the blood that is used. Sometimes some people do covenant in the other realm with chicken. Some people do covenant because blood covenant is very powerful. Some people do it with turkey. Some people do covenant with what? With gold and with animal. In the Old Testament, before Jesus was crucified, what did they do? They used a what? An animal. The blood of an animal. Those kind of covenant are temporary covenant. That kind of redemption are what? Temporary redemption. Because they have to do it every year. Because that tells me, because they do it every year, that tells me that blood is not that powerful. It's not that powerful. That means every year we have to slaughter a goat. And they call it a what? Scapegoat. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. They call it what? Scapegoat. So every year, an high priest is the only one that would do it. They will get one goat. They lay hands on one goat. That means they will want impact all the sins of the nation on one goat. And they will release the goat into the wilderness. The other goat, they will kill it. They do this every year. So that blood 
of that animal is not strong enough, it can only hold it for one year. But the blood of Jesus, Jesus don't have to die every year. His blood don't have to be shed every year. He shed his blood one time. Hallelujah. All we need to do is to celebrate Good Friday, not to shed another blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's everlasting redemption in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Some covenants are made by blood of goats. Some covenants are made by blood of bull or blood of man. You didn't hear that? The blood of man. But the blood of Jesus is not the blood of goat. It's not the blood of bull. Those are temporary covenants. A temporary redemption. But the blood of Jesus. That is the blood of God. Why do I say that? It wasn't the blood of man. It was the blood of who? Of God. Because DNA of Joseph and Mary was not in Jesus. No, you didn't hear me. It was not in Jesus. He cannot be in Jesus. If it's in Jesus, that means that blood is not perfect. Because there was sin in the blood of Mary. That's what we call Adamic blood. So God himself has to generate his blood. Have to generate his perfect blood and shed it for us. So some covenants are made by blood of goat, of bull, or man. But ultimate covenant was made by blood of God himself. The blood of Jesus was the blood of God. Because God requires a perfect sacrifice. Pure sacrifice. The Bible makes us understand if one sin, that means what? All sin. If all have sin, can we produce perfect sacrifice? Come on, church, talk to me. Come on, church, talk to me. Can we produce perfect sacrifice to God? No, we cannot. To God himself. Sometimes when, when you think about this, you will see how much God loves us. Do you think about this? God loves us so much that he cannot allow the enemy to have us. He said, if they are not perfect because all have seen, I myself will come. I myself will shed my blood so that God will not compromise his righteousness. Come on, I may know that God is righteous. I may know that God is holy. So in the Old Testament, what they would do, they would get two goats. One, they would lay hands on the goat and they send it in the wilderness. It's called a what? Scapegoat. Scapegoat. What is scapegoat? I looked this up in the Oxford Advanced Dictionary. Scapegoat means person blamed or punished for the punishment or the wrongdoing of another. Scapegoat. So Jesus was our scapegoat. Hallelujah. We did something wrong, but Jesus paid the price. Jesus was blamed for what we did. Jesus was punished for our mistake. Jesus was disciplined for our wrongdoing. What a mighty God we serve. Let me give you some scriptures. Let's go quick to Isaiah 53, 4, to 4, and 4, 5, and 6. It says, Surely he was born for our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him striking, smiting by God. 
and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. What is transgression? What is transgression? We know it's a sin, but what is transgression? The word transgression means to tread above or across the law of God. Transgression. He was wounded. That's why I said everything that Jesus did on the Christ is for us and is for a purpose. Glory to God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Not his own iniquity. Transgression. He was wounded. The wound that Jesus took on the cross was for our transgressions. Our disobedience. Transgression also means to disobey the law of God. To disobey the principle and the precept of God. That means we transgress, we tread upon or across the law of God. That's what they call God, judge of all. Transgress for our transgression. He was wounded. All the wound that Jesus took, he was for us. And the bruises for our iniquity. Amen. There's two types of bruises. Come on. With him and above. Do you know you can be bruised internally? Uh huh. And you can, can be bruised externally. So Jesus paid both price for eternal bruises and the external bruises. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Bruises with him and Above, he was chastised for our peace, was upon him. Hallelujah. The peace of God was upon him. I pray for you today that the enemy will not take your peace because Jesus paid the price for our peace. Hallelujah. Do you know that? Do you know that? He paid the price for your peace. I pray that the enemy will not be able to take your peace. There's two types of peace. Peace with God and peace of God. The enemy tried to take away the peace with of God. So you can get to peace with God. Amen. When you have peace with God, that means you are safe. You are standing uprightly with God. Hallelujah. Peace with God. Remember reconciliation. What happened? The enmity. The active reconciliations. It means that the enmity between God and man has been removed. Has been taken away. So we have peace with God. Hallelujah. Now when you have peace with God, we need to also protect peace of God. Because when you have peace with God, God gives you peace. Hello? Hey, church, hello? Money is not peace. Big house is not peace. Big car is not peace. Big businesses is not peace. Some people are chasing big houses and chasing money, but that is not peace. I have learned the more you have, little peace you're going to have. I have friends that millions. I have friends that are billionaires. I'm serious. I have them, but so much I will tell you. Me know they got money, but they ain't got no peace. I have more peace than them. Amen. <laughs> With the liberty that I have, I'm happy. I'm excited. Are you hear what I'm saying? No, I'm serious. I have a friend that sent jet. If I lie to you, Pastor. He sell jets. Huh? The name is Justin. Jet. But all of those things don't bring happiness. Big house don't bring happiness. It's good to have a house. Come on, church. Can I hear amen? 
It's good to have a house and have a good house. I have this friend telling me, you know, he, he, said, he said, I have this house here, I have this house here, I have this, I have that. He don't have peace because his mind is all over the place. Amen. But the important thing for us is to have peace with God. Even if you have peace with God, it's okay to have a lot of stuff. Because the source of your peace is not material. The source of your peace is not material stuff. The source of your peace is God. I have peace with God. I have the peace of God that is coming to God. And I realize material, it doesn't give me peace. Yeah. Jesus paid the price for our peace. I pray today in the name of Jesus that the peace of God will reign over your life. The peace of God will reign over your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the enemy will not be able to take away your peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Money don't give us peace. Jesus give us peace. Jesus paid the price for our peace. Hallelujah! So that's why we Christians, we don't seek money. We don't seek material things. We seek God. Those things are what we call fringe benefit. No, you didn't hear me. No, you didn't hear me. Fringe what? Fringe benefits. Prosperity also comes from God. God can bless you with great things. But we don't seek that. We seek the giver, not the gift. When you seek the giver, the giver will continuously give in to you. But when you seek the gift, the gift will perish and you will have no more. But when you seek God, you know what James said? He said, all perfect and good things come from God. Do you believe that? Amen, believe that. And I prophesy over you good things, great things will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Great gift, the gift in Jesus' name. But first of all, the peace of God will reign in your heart, will reign in your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus paid the price for our peace. He said he will chastise for our peace was upon him. The punishment for our peace. That's what he meant. The punishment for our peace was upon him. So if you don't have peace, did Jesus, was, was he punished in vain? Did he receive the chastisement in vain? It means the punishment of our peace. He paid the price. That's why I will not allow the enemy to take my peace. In the name of Jesus. I didn't get a good amen, no. I didn't get a good amen, no. Do you believe what I'm teaching here today? Ah! This is the gospel. He paid the price for our peace. He paid the price for our healing. He paid the price for our peace. You will have peace. I said you will have peace. I said you will have peace. I said you will have peace. By force, by force, you will have peace. Because Jesus paid the price. He was chastised for our peace. Father, we thank you. And by his stripes, and by his own stripes, not your stripes, I like that. Can you display that on the screen? I want you to see that, church. By his stripes. By his stripes, we were what? I don't allow sickness to stay in my body. And I'm not saying sickness don't come, it comes. But I don't permit it. Because I hold on to that scripture. I hold on to that will of God. Let me give you a story real quick. Yes, ago, Pastor Masha and I, we went to Australia. Does it go to Australia? To Sydney, Sydney, Australia, to Hill Song Conference. How many heard of that before? Hill Song Conference. You've been there? Oh my goodness. You got to go. 
one of these years we will fly down there. I like how they do their praise and worship. You know, during praise and worship, you know, they don't have dance like us, you know, the skills and the move of dancing. They don't have it like us. We got it. But for them, they don't know how to dance, but they know how to jump. Everybody jumping. Hallelujah. I love it. Even when I got there, I lost my skills. Because we go down, we come up, and we do some skills. They don't do all of that. Everybody was doing jumping. And I just love that. Every the pastor and the singers, everybody in the congregation, thousands of people. Everybody jumping. We don't have to jump. You don't have to jump. When they do it, they do it in this place. Don't have to do it. Jumping. Indoor. Jumping. And oh. Glory of God will come. So we went. It was the first time God said, Go. I take the ticket. Because I knew it was so far. So I saw the price. Do you believe I called them? I said there was a typo. <laughs> I told them, I said there was a typo. How can you pay that much money to go? You know, I saw business class. Not only I fly economy, you know, because I'm good health. Amen. You know, I can pocket, I can save my money. I don't do business. You know, even if I have money for business, glory to God, I will sleep, I do economy. So I mistakenly checked business. And I saw the price. Because so far, I can say, hey, there's a typo. So I called them. I said, I saw the price for business. Even the economy, I saw the price. There's a typo on your website. The madam said, hello. Oh, that's no typo. That is the price. Oh, Jesus. Pastor Major Professor, I said, God said we have to go. I said, God got to tell me too. No, 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 no. I, I hear from God too. I want to hear from God. Ticket for two people. Even the economy was expensive. But anyway, God said, go. We went. I'm going somewhere with this. I hold on to these scriptures. So we left. I was in Google. The moment we got to Sydney, the first day we were supposed to go to the service, we were ready. I went in the shower to shower. I don't know what happened. I walked in the shower straight. I came out like this. Now, true story. I see this pain in my back. Serious. Wife saw me. She saw me when I went in, standing straight. I came out like this. I mean, if I was in Africa, I would say it's a juju. I would say it's a juju. Somebody say arrow. All the way from Africa. To my back. I would say, which crap? What kind of juju? Pain, serious pain. And my chapter was ready to go. She said, So you're going to stay? Stay where? I went like that. The reason why sometimes we don't receive it is because we don't believe the word. We don't believe the word. If we believe the word, the word of God works. Sometimes we give up too soon. I put on my clothes. Most people will not go, they will stay. The pain will get worse. No, I put on my clothes. Even I want to shame, a lot of people don't know me anyway. So they will think maybe I walk like this. I went there. This is what I mean. During worship. Oh my God. That's why worship is so important. Praise and worship God. It's for us. And also for God. Amen. And they begin to jump. They begin to jump. When I was there, I was like this. Everyone was jumping, but I could not jump. Anytime I jump, pain. Pastor Marshall was there too. But she was jumping. She was jumping. She was jumping. She was jumping. But in my spirit. In my mind, I want to jump, but I cannot jump. But I was here, but I was trying to move it, you know, a little bit. I had to watch everybody jumping. In my spirit, I begin to see myself. 
in the spirit, jumping, jumping, jumping. I was singing, I was singing. Suddenly, what I was seeing in the spirit began to manifest in the natural realm. So as I begin to jump in the spirit, to jump between, I find that the moment I was singing and jumping in the spirit, and you look, I see my back, it just, see, my leg was moving, just begin to move a little bit, then I begin to jump, I begin to jump, I begin to jump. I was jealous, but somebody was jumping, I cannot jump. She got in the spirit, she don't even remember me. She was jumping and shouting and screaming, but suddenly, I didn't even realize it. I began to jump. She made me realize it. She told me, ah, you are jumping now. I said, the Lord has healed me. The Lord has delivered me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I tell you, the word of God works. If you believe and you exercise your faith. That's what I did. I exercised my faith. The word of God says, by his strength. By his own strength, I am healed. Jesus paid the price uh, for my pain, uh, for my sickness, uh, for my disease. Uh. The Bible said he bore our pain. He carried our sorrow. And by his strength, we are healed. I begin to jump. I begin to jump. And I was healed. The problem here, we have to exercise. Faith is what? Correct. Action. If I stay there, I believe I am healed. But I don't put it in action. That's the real thing. I believe it. And I move. The woman with the issue of blood, and I will stop. The same thing with the woman with the issue of blood. She heard about Jesus. She believed that Jesus can heal her. Because she believed the word of God. Malachi, I believe 4, 2 or 2, 4. When the son of righteousness shall arrive, there shall be healing. Where? In his wing. Is the word of God. It's the same thing. Believe the word. Act upon the word. You will experience miracle. Amen. The woman believed. When the son of righteousness shall arise, there shall be healing in his wings. And what she did? You can stay home and believe. But that's not faith. There's a difference between what? Faith and belief. Can you say that? There's what? Different with and belief. If I believe, I don't need to move. But if I have faith, I have to move based on my belief. Somebody here with me. You can believe and stay here. If I believe that I'm here and I just stayed there, my wife went and jumping and I'm stayed there crying. My back. Lord is the devil. Why did I allow the devil? The first thing we said is the devil. Hello? The first you come to oh man, they send an arrow. So the arrow flew from where? Africa? To Australia. Exercise your faith. Amen? If I stay there, I stay home by myself. Do you think I'll be healed? God can do that, I believe. But I have to exercise my faith. Amen? Belief plus faith equals miracle. Belief plus faith equals what? Miracle. Do you believe? The woman with the issue of blood, she believed. She was sick for 12 years. She was flowing blood, losing blood. Do you know when you lose blood, you lose strength? Why? Because life is living. But she left her home. She opened the door. She goes towards Jesus. That's faith. She moved from the realm of belief to the realm of faith. Because faith is now faith. Amen. Oh God, I don't have time. Now what? Faith is when? Sometimes we postpone our faith to the future. I'm telling you. Faith is not for the future. Hope is for the future. 
Hope is for what? For the future. I hope to be a man like that. I hope to be healed. Don't hope to be healed. Be healed. When you hope to, the, to be healed, what you have done, you have postponed. You have pushed your faith in the future. That's why a minister in the power ministry, I know this now. You postpone the future. I'll be healed whenever God wants to do it. Let's God do it. No, that's wrong. If the will of God, you know, God, if it's five years, I'll wait for five years. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. You know, you know that song? That says, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Hey, hey, hey. And I understand some things you wait for, but some things are now. Faith is when? Your healing is when? Your deliverance is when? It's a now thing. The Lord bless you. I'm going to stop. Come on, let's bless you. I'm going to stop. Now! I'm in trust in God for healing today. Now, be healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus, because Jesus paid the price. Hallelujah. He paid the price for me. He paid the price for your peace. He paid the price for your sicknesses. Hallelujah. The peace of God, he was chastised for my peace. I pray that the peace of God will reign over your life. Will reign over your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will forgive your iniquities. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he was bruised for our iniquity. Amen. He was wounded for our transgression. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. Thank you for what you did on the cross. We give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that Jesus did on the cross was for us, not for him. But we have to believe and move by faith without works is Amen. Believe don't need works. You don't need to believe. But faith has to be what? We call it corresponding action. I believe the scripture. I didn't feel sorry for myself and stay in the room while my wife was jumping and jumping. You know, I'm praising God. I said, no, I'm going, if you cannot jump, but I will be in the atmosphere. Very important. Be in the what? In the atmosphere of miracle. Amen. Can God heal me at home? Yeah, he can do it. Right? I'm not going to wait for him to come heal me there. I'm going to the atmosphere. It's the atmosphere. And I'm sorry those are watching over the Facebook. Facebook or, 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 or virtual is good. But I'm telling you there's nothing like the atmosphere. To be in the atmosphere. And that's what Elijah told Elisha. If you see me, go. If you want, see me, go. He wants the man to. There's some things you can't take from Facebook. And I'm sorry if, if you are far, continue to watch on Facebook. But if you are close, better come in the house. I'm serious. Man to, you cannot pick it up on TV. You can get healed. And get delivered. It's a mantle. You see, if you want to see me go, you have to be in the atmosphere of miracle. If you see me, go. That's why Elisha will not leave him alone. He makes sure he's in the atmosphere. Amen? Amen. God bless you. We're going to take our offering. Come on, let's bless God. Yes, 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 Father, we thank you. Yes, Father, we bless you. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Oh, Father, we exalt your name. Mighty God, we bless you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can we stand and praise God for a few minutes? Is that okay? As we bring our offering, let's get ready for our tithe and offering. Can you display on the screen? Amen. Way to give. 
Also those that would give a resurrection seed, remember that? We always give that Bible Sunday, we give today, resurrection seed as well. Hallelujah, way to give. Then we're going to begin to praise God and give and celebrate Good Friday. Our website is Everlasting Life CC. You can give from there. So some that are given online, Everlasting Life CC. You go to that's Cash App, dollar sign, sorry, dollar sign, Everlasting Life CC. That's the Cash App. And also website, everlastinglife.org. Amen. Things have changed nowadays. You know, before everybody bring envelope, now I don't need to bring an envelope, just go online. Amen. So if you give online, come and touch the basket so I know people that are giving. If you give online, just come and touch. If you don't give online, hey, have you given? All right. In the beginning, when we are doing online, I just see some people. Everybody just sit there and say, ah, what's going on? We are not giving. Online, give online and come talk so I know you give. And the church say amen. amen. Do you know it's your tithe and offering that's what we use to maintain this beautiful place. You know that, right? Yeah, that's what we use to maintain. You know, it's costly. You know that? You want me to tell you how much a month? But we have faith. And we've been doing it since we've been here. So I want to thank you, those that are giving their time and paying their offering. I pray that the Lord bless you exceedingly, abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will promote you, will elevate you in the name of Jesus. That you may have sufficient, you may have more in the name of Jesus. I declare the more you give, the more you receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, oh God, I pray Psalm 34 verse 10. The Bible says, young lion do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord, they will not lack any good thing in Jesus' name. I declare you will not lack any good thing in Jesus' name. You will not lack money. You will not lack material things because you may call your reward. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare elevation. I declare promotion. I declare opportunity. Opportunities the opportunity will come in the name of Jesus. You know the difference with us? We will not seek opportunity, opportunities will come to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, even today, I was just chilling, resting. I get the test, there's a project we are doing. Uh, Stan Murphy called me. I thought, I forget about that. I was in and said, man of God, they want to talk to you next week. If I lie to you, say they want to talk to you. I don't go after those things. Go to the way and read it. I got it. On today, I got it. She called me, I'm sure. And then I spoke to him. He said the project, because we are doing humanitarian project, you know, hospitals. This guy called me from nowhere. I was not going after that. I was seeking the face of God. An opportunity was coming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I prophesy over your life that opportunity will be looking for you in the name of Jesus Christ. As you support this ministry, as you give from your sweat, as you sow from your sweat, Jehovah will bless you exceedingly and abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Say, Father. Say, Father. I declare in the name of Jesus. Expected. Unexpected. Financial miracles. Will come to me by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth. Expected. Unexpected. Financial miracles, we come by fire. We come by fire. In the name of Jesus, I declare it. So shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because I am 
a kingdom financier. I am a kingdom financier. Tell somebody, I am kingdom financier. Kingdom financier. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because I am a kingdom financier. Unexpected and expected financial miracles will come towards me. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will go towards God. I will see God. Opportunity will come to me. In the name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth. I declare with my mouth. The Bible says, there's power on the tongue. There's power in my mouth. Anything I say in the spirit, he form himself and come to manifestation. In the name of Jesus. I believe I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, and I'm expected. I'm expecting it. I believe 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 it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When you speak the word. With power and authority, it forms in the atmosphere. When we speak a word, we put in the angel of God to work. Some angels are jobless because believers are not speaking by faith. Can we take off? I'm excited to what God is doing in this dispensation. That's what we declare expected and unexpected. The one that you're expecting will come. And the one that you don't know, I, I like that, We also come. Amen. Amen. So let us give. Amen. I'm going to bless it. Yeah, just bring it. I will bless it later. Bring your offering. <laughs>
celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As Christian, that's the thing we have. That any other religion has resurrection. All their leaders die and they're still dead. But Jesus is alive forever and ever. Amen. He resurrected not to the same body. Don't, don't, don't forget that. Church. Not to the same body. It's a glorified body. How did that happen? Because the spirit was quickened first. It's a spirit that is quickened. I'll touch, touch some of you Sunday. The spirit was what? Quickened. So that he did not expect the second death. That's why as Christian, you will not experience the second death. No, you will not. Jesus, his spirit was what? Quickly. And the Bible says he went to prison to preach to those that were there. Not the souls. And that the spirit that was quickening, then went to the grave. And the spirit that was quickening of Jesus entered him in the grave. That's what that miracle happened. His body disappeared from the cloth. Oh, Lord. His body disappeared. It will happen to us too. I won't give you my closing message. Just come. Come on, just come on Sunday. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm telling you. It will happen to us soon, very soon. But I'll tell you on Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. I look forward to seeing you guys on Sunday. Let's invite our friends, our family to come to celebrate with us. And after church service, we're going to go to the address. Can we put the address on the screen? I want everybody to have the address. We're going to go there where we can fellowship, eat, fellowship, have fun, and celebrate the feast. The address to the location. Also, we have a sax player that will be coming on Sunday. Minister Shola is very good, very anointed. We'll be here on Sunday as well. Then after service, we will go and eat somewhere here in Columbia, Maryland. Amen. So we'll be here Sunday. Amen. Glory to God. We look forward to see you. Invite friends and family. Also, Jason, Dad, and Mom, thank you for coming. Good to see you again and again. Amen. Thank you. Come here also, first time guest. God bless you, Pastor Masha. Thank you. Let's welcome her. Pastor Masha will see you after the service as well. And to me with you, amen. First time guest over there, too. Okay, Pastor Masha, we will see them. Amen. Also, we have the cafe, it's open. We have some snacks, not heavy food, uh, drinks, and snacks. We use that for fundraising so it can help us to maintain this location that we are in. Just support, buy something, bless somebody, and uh, go from there. Amen. Are you blessed today? Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, let it guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let the rest, let it remain, let it abide with us now and forevermore. And the church shout, Amen. amen. Let, let me ask you, church, do you like this? You like it? Amen. We are marching on. <laughs>